Welcome to Crime Most French, a fortnightly podcast covering intriguing cases carried out on French soil. Researched and narrated by Cedric and rudely interrupted by me, Melanie. We're the true crime podcast on the lines. Crack open the van and let the mayhem commence. This is episode 60, Claude Nolibé, Too Good to be True. In July 1991, in Clérac, in tarn Caroline Nolibé, 18, is found dead in front of her parents' house. It took 10 years to solve the crime. That's a long time. It is a long time. We seem to do quite but a lot of cases in the South. Uh, it must be coincidence. I don't think they have more crime than in the North. No. There's more people in the North, so most likely more crime. It could be yeah, in absolute quantity. Around about holiday time and stuff, yeah. It just happens to be that way. On the 31st of July, 1991, Claude Nolibé is home. At about 11 p.m., he can hear noises. He thinks that it might be his dog a whimpering outside. All right, okay, see one of these people that doesn't allow his dogs. It's inside. July. In Tarnagaron, oh, it's hot. hot. Yeah, it's probably cooler outside than it is inside. It probably is, yeah. yes. Okay. Well. Also, the dog is not going to be cold. <laughs> well, no. So, we don't know what happens to the dog in the winter, but in July, it doesn't need to be in the Right. The dog is sick, so it wouldn't be entirely surprising if it was, if it was making mm. noises. I don't know what he had. He looks outside to be sure, and he sees a dark mass in front of his house door. Mm. When he comes out, he realizes that it's not his dog, it's his daughter, Caroline, who's against the gate, hanging for her tie, from her tie. Ooh, right, okay, that's nasty. Poor thing. Yeah, so he panics, he unties her, obviously, Yeah. turns her over, and he discovers that she's covered in blood. Oh, no. But she's still breathing. So he rushes to the house, but can't unlock his phone. So he runs to the neighbors and tells them that someone killed his daughter. The neighbor calls the doctor, mm-hmm. and then goes to Caroline, checks so, her. But what at that year point, was this? She's no longer breathing. It's 1991. Right, okay. So it wouldn't be a mobile phone, it would be a landline. Mm-hmm. The doctor arrives, checks Caroline, mm-hmm. and yes, she's dead. So he calls the gendarmes, a bit late, but mm. the, when they arrive, they find her... On her back, dead, obviously, mm. they quickly find that how she died, she has a big stab wound in the chest. So she wasn't hung, that you would think, because yeah. she was hanging from her tie from the so, gate. So that was just purely was for staging first. then in that case. But at that point, we have no idea what's happening. Yeah, poor thing. Checking around the body, they find a footprint, some cigarette butts, and Caroline's umbrella but no knife, no weapon that could be the source of the wound, no trace of a fight. So they bag and tag everything Mm -hmm. and send everything to the lab. So it's possible that this isn't the actual scene, murder scene? At that point, they don't know, but yes, it's a possibility that it's not the murder scene, yes. At that point, um, in newspapers, they don't go into too much detail. Right. Either they don't have the detail, so they don't don't want to say, so... At that point, there's no mention of how much blood there is. At the scene, yeah. At the scene, um, there's very little information except that she's been stabbed, she's covered in blood. Yeah. She was hanging from her tie, she's been untied and mm. rolled over. That's pretty much all the newspapers have at the at that yeah. time. I mean, people want to know information about these things, but it really isn't in the police's interest to show their their full hand of uh, no. information. To, no, of course not. To, to everybody, so yes. yeah. Fair enough. And they possibly don't know that much either. No, that's true. So the gendarmes interrogate the father because, of course, he was the person who found the body. They want him to explain how he found his daughter and exactly what he did to her. Mm. He tells them that he found his daughter at the gate. He unhung her. (laughs) Yes. Turned her over, found the blood and panicked. Right. The gendarmes go to the house. So at that point, we are still in the middle of the night. They first discover a blood mark on one of the house shutters on the outside. Right, okay. Fairly low down. 
They also find blood inside the house, in the sun house. Right. And they also find traces on the table, on the light switch, and on the phone that Claude, the father, yeah. didn't manage to use earlier. Presumably this was uh, all explained, this can all be explained away by the fact he went inside to phone for the doctor. Yes, that's what they think. They think that it kind of makes sense that after touching her, he would have blood mm. on his hands and he could touch things and yeah. panicked, run, run around and smeared blood all over the place. Yes. They're not entirely surprised at that point to find the, the blood in those places. It makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it, you get to the, the stage of, you, you know, we know what to do, you know. Well, you always like to think that you would know what to do if you were ever in a horrific position of finding a dead body. But, I mean, this guy probably didn't think, oh, I shouldn't be touching my daughter because I could be contaminating yeah, according scene. all he wanted to do was help his daughter. Who yeah, was... according to what he said, he was panic, so panicked that he couldn't even unlock his phone. Yes. And I'm not too sure what that means because landlines didn't really no. get locked and it wasn't no. a mobile phone. It could be that there was a child lock on the phone. And I remember those with a small key that were locking oh, the right. dial when I was a kid. <laughs> right, okay, yes. So it could be that because mm. she, she's 18 at that point. Yeah. So they had the old style rotary. She, he, they could have oh. an old rotary. It was yeah. 91. It could have been from mm. the early 80s, late 70s. Yeah. And because she's only 18, she wasn't a kid that long ago. So it could still have the lock on. Mm. Why it would have been locked, I don't know. And I don't remember if they locked automatically because I only vaguely, we never had one of those, but I only vaguely remember seeing it in no, some other I people's house. No, I don't think you had one either. So I don't remember. I just remember the key that was going through pushing a rod through one of the holes of the dial yeah. so you couldn't dial. Maybe that's what it was. I don't know. The problems the gendarmes have at that point is that Claude's answers are a bit confused. Uh -huh. But... It's night time. He's just found his daughter, you know. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's late. He had a big shock. Yeah. Um, but sometimes he answers, maybe, why not? I don't remember. So uh, they're kind of... They're, They're slightly suspicious sure. of him. His story kind of makes sense, but the details aren't clear. And yeah. he's not clear about the details either. So no. they're not sure. Is there is there no mum in the picture? Is he there? No, uh, they're divorced. Right. We'll talk about that later. later. Okay. Also, the, the, the phones is really the one thing that bothers the, the gendarmes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I can see you, you always, uh, you know, there's so many people who get murdered by somebody who they know. And and our and our family member, then yeah, it's understandable why the police would be wanting to. Yeah, they they find it strange that him. he couldn't unlock that phone, and they find it strange that the phone was locked. Yeah, and he has no very good answer for that. No, so they understand if that happened, why he went to the neighbor, but yeah. they don't understand exactly why it happened in the first place. So, but, but people do strange things when they're panicking. I remember uh, seeing a documentary about the fires in the London Underground. Yes. And the camera showed people running into walls, but not just by accident, like in video games, like hitting walls over and over and over and So they over. basically turned into sim characters. Yeah, they? they were essentially turning into sim characters because they were totally panicked. They weren't thinking and they were just hitting the walls yeah. over and over and over again. That makes absolutely no sense when, when mm. you're in normal state. But... People do very strange yeah, things when they panic. So. Sh shock does, uh, you know, a lot of damage to your cognitive functions. There, there is no doubt about that. Yeah. So, ah, maybe that's that's all it is. It's hard to tell, but it bothers them. Yes. So from day one, they think maybe he killed his daughter, but they need to prove it, obviously. So they start an inquiry the next day, and it continues not going very well for Claude. When they inspect the house, they discover keys on the door, on the inside. They're Caroline, Caroline's keys. So how can her keys be inside the house, on the door, if she was killed when she was still outside? Oh, no. That's the second thing that really bothers the gendarme. It's the yeah. phone and those keys. That's a bit whiffy. And the whole, the, during the whole inquiry for 10 years, they go back to those, those keys. They yeah. want to explain how those keys could be inside the house. If she hadn't been inside the house yet, why would her keys be in the door? They just can't explain it and it really bothers them. They always go back to it. If you think about that, if the keys are inside, in the door, on the door inside the house, it means that she has been in the house, but somehow was killed outside. So is is this a residential area? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a 
modern housing estate with lots of houses. So to me, it just seems a bit weird that uh, there are no witnesses. That's why I was like thinking... It was 11 at night. Uh, housing estates tend to be very quiet. Well, yeah, but I mean, if you're plunging a knife into somebody's chest... But there's no, There was no trace of any fight or anything. She didn't defend herself. It's so possibly stabbed from behind then. So yes. the person reached round and... Yes, uh, it's possible. Right. She didn't make a noise. Well, it's, it looks like she didn't make a noise yeah. anyway. I, 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 just, I just find it very strange to think that she would have been stabbed there and not made any noise at all or... At yeah, the moment, that's what it looks like, yes. Yeah, okay. So back to those keys. If they're inside the door, doesn't that mean that she went in? Mm. That the only person in the house at the time was her dad? Yeah. Who else could have killed her then? And how did he not see her? Yeah, he was is, the one person there. That is very, very... It does kind of like give the inference that possibly she went inside. The murderer could have come inside. And uh, obviously she wasn't murdered inside because there would have been surely more evidence of blood marks or splashing or, you know, any sign of a... I mean, you said she didn't struggle, so... No, there was know. no trace of struggle on her. Mm. So that that really doesn't play well for, for Claude because as far as they can tell, if she had been in the house, either he saw her, but mm-hmm. he says he didn't, he didn't. And she couldn't have been killed outside without him knowing that she was there. Because he said he only discovered her because she, he had no, heard noises from outside. Yeah, the but if her keys are inside, she must have been inside. How yeah. does he not know she was in the house with him? So they just, they don't, they can't make that work. They just don't understand yeah. that part of the story. Those keys are really bothering the Yeah, the yeah, I, I must admit, it. it's, it's, it's very, very... Weird. At some point he tries to explain it and he says that it must be that he confused his keys with hers because they used to put them... He explained that they both used to put them in the bread bag outside. Right. So remember, here you have yes. the bakers that deliver yes. bread in the morning. Mm. Most and people you, you have your, a bag, bag. Yes, or a so box. That. Yes. So he says that they used to put their house keys in the bag outside. Right. Of course, nobody locked the, the, the house in 91 in in small towns in France. My grandmother only started locking her her doors in the 90s. And she had buildings in front of her, like Irish Irish rise, five stories. But she had lots of people living on the other side of the road. And even then, it took the late 90s before she started locking her door. It's it's normal here not to lock your door. Yeah, and Angoulême's a big city, for goodness sake. And Angoulême is a big city, yes. Well, big city, 21,000 people. It's not exactly... (laughs) (laughs) It's not New York. For for, for the region, yes. Well, that's our biggest city here, yes. Yes. But yeah, it's still a a fairly big town. And it's normal at the time. So there's nothing surprising that it would leave the keys outside. Yeah. So he says maybe he confused his keys with hers. Right. Maybe. Maybe he used her keys all day. And that's essentially what is Yeah, I mean, I guess so. If, If you don't have any, like, amusing key rings... Well, if, even if you do, once you realize it's not your keys, but they're still yeah. the house keys, you just continue with it because True. you have to finish your day. Yeah. So that, that, that's what he's ex- explaining to them. Mm-hmm. They're still not happy about that, but no. that's his explanation. Also, there's another problem with the story. Caroline's mother, who's divorced uh-huh. from him, she's still very close to, to her daughter. Mm. So she sees her pretty much every day. Right. They only leave hundreds of meters if not a couple of maximum a couple of kilometers away from each other right so walkable walkable distance just dropping by yes but she there are main houses the she decided when the divorce she decided to live with her dad right but they live very close by so oh she, presumably their the relationship isn't f- fractured or the parents relationship is not great no, I meant her relationship with her father. Oh, no, she has a good relationship with both of them. Right. She Obviously, when they divorced, they didn't use her um, as, a, as two, a way to hurt each other. She didn't weaponize the, chi- the children. That's yeah, never a good They didn't idea. try to weaponize, weaponize her. So no. she, she's, she's in good terms with both. She just chose her dad to, to right. live with. So she says that Caroline came to see her early that evening. And when she arrived, she put her keys on her table. Her keys? And Yes, she's sure, sure it was her keys because there was a heart key ring. So basically what I was saying, you have something yes. that's 
distinguishing yes. your keys from anyone else. Yeah, but it, it still, it, it, his story could have still worked because if he had realized he had her keys, that's probably the only keys he had anyway. So he had to finish today with her keys. And she might have had his keys, so it still mm-hmm. works. But now it doesn't really work. No, it doesn't work because at all. Because what we're saying is that at 11 p.m. when she was killed, her keys were in the door in the house. Mm. But earlier that evening, they were at her mom's house mm-hmm. because she went to see her mom. So that story about the keys gets even worse. And the gendarme still can't explain what was going on because now they have the keys with Caroline. Yes. But somehow they ended up on the door inside. Yeah. When she was murdered. But of course, it could be that the mother's remembering wrong. You know, people... But she says she's absolutely sure of it because she she can picture her putting the keys on her table and she recognized the keys. Of course, it could have been another day. Witnesses exactly. are really bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it could be at the previous day she does did yes. the same thing, and that's exactly. what she remembers. If she goes around so regularly, and it's, you know, just a small gesture, it could easily be... I mean, yes. she didn't say, oh, look, mum, I've got a new key ring or anything. Yes, exactly. You know? Oh, and we're Tuesday today. So, <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, witnesses are not good, no. but she's sure of it. Okay. So the gendarmes take that into account. Right. But that means that closed story makes absolutely no sense now. No. And they can't even find any way to make it work other than Caroline went into the house before she was murdered. So but they decided to arrest him. that still doesn't mean that uh, he, that Claude murdered his daughter. No, but his story makes no sense. Uh, if, whatever, yeah. Whichever he, way the gendarmes look at it, yeah. he had to have seen his daughter before she died and he says no. So yeah. they arrest him on suspicion of murder, mm-hmm. obviously. They interrogate him especially about those keys, because yes. they really want to understand. Yeah. And at first, he doesn't realize that they suspect him of the murder. Oh, so he, he, just thinks they're going just, for a, he just thinks they're going yeah. in for a chat, does yeah, he? Yeah, essentially. He's a bit naive and probably not the sharpest tool in the box, I suspect, because it, it really reminds me of like uh, when um, Dassey or... Oh, Brandon Dassey. Yeah, yeah. When, when they were questioned and they didn't, didn't realize that they were being interrogated to prove that they were the murderers. Mm. He didn't realize at the time. He just wanted to go home and watch TV. Yeah, he was wanting back to watch the WWE. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, it, Claude reminds me of that. He just chats yeah. to them and doesn't realize what they're asking and why they're asking. It took, it took him a long time to switch on and realize, oh, you're asking me that because you think I killed mm. my, my daughter. But at the, at the start, when they question him on the next day, he just, just don't, doesn't realize what's going on. I mean, I would... Uh, if. <laughs> Now putting myself in the situation of uh, ever being, you know, in, in the environs of a, you know, a police station and being questioned, there would I would never ever speak to uh, law enforcement without a lawyer. I think that's yes, crazy. Yes, but in ninety one you couldn't ask for a lawyer for I think they had forty eight hours to question you before you can you could ask for a lawyer. That, that changed in the mid nineties, as far as I remember. Oh, right. So, yes, then there was a, a day or two, I think it was two days, they could question you without well, a lawyer. in that case... Of course, we could not answer I was any question. Say, they would get two words from me. One would be comment and the other one would be no. Yeah, but he's naive. He doesn't understand why. Yeah. He's just trying to help as far as he's concerned. Mm. So, it takes him a long time to switch on that they think that he's a murderer. Of course, it doesn't make him a murderer. No. But that's what the gendarmes think and that's what they want to prove. They just don't know why. So five days after the murder, the autopsy is performed on the body. That's a fairly long time, but remember, it's mid-July. No, everybody's on holiday. Everybody's on holiday, and that includes Amy's. <laughs> yes. So nobody was available to do the autopsy, yeah. so it took five days to, to do it. Yes, even coroners need holidays. Yeah. And doctor noticed, noticed a few things. He noticed that Caroline was indeed killed with a knife. It went in and left a four centimeter wound, damaged the rib on the way in, cut the pericardium, that's the skin around the heart, I think, right. and then ended up its travel in the right ventricle. Yeah, and that's going to be pretty quick. No, it took probably 10 to 15 minutes for her to die. Oh, no. Because when your heart is stabbed, stabbed. you don't die instantly. <sighs> it takes a long time for the heart to stop. Even if it's bleeding massively, it still take a long time, takes a long time for the heart to stop. And even then, you still have lots of blood in your body. So you take a long time to die. Oh, poor wee poppet. Yes. She was only 18. Yes. She has other wounds that the gendarmes didn't see when they looked at her in, mm. in the dark. 
one is on the eyelid and the other one is on the nose, so on the face. Right, okay. So there must have been some kind of struggle then in that case. There's been other violence, but not necessarily struggle. You could imagine somebody coming in front of her, punch her in the face and stab her. There's no struggle. Oh. And that would leave the same marks. You never want to think too hard about uh, somebody being murdered. I, well, I certainly don't. <laughs> no. I mean, it's, it's one thing for us to, to talk about it, but to logistically, I, it's not, uh, working in forensics is certainly not something I, don't, I would have the, the heart to do. There's no trace of strangulation. So. Right. And so uh, it was very much staged then for the, the time. No, no. Um, uh, what it means is that really the only thing that happened to her is that she, she was stabbed. somehow got hit on the face and stabbed right. straight away. And that's mm-hmm. it. And there's no sexual violence. The toxicology test revealed no specific substance in her body. So she wasn't on drugs or anything. Right. So she wasn't drugged first. She hadn't been out drinking or anything. No. Because that would have explained why she didn't struggle. Mm. But no, there's yeah. nothing in her blood that they can find. Mm-hmm. So the way the gendarmes see it is Caroline was attacked, hit on the face twice, and then quickly stabbed through the heart. So that means that the attack, as far as I can tell, possibly lasted seconds. Then it took her 10 or 15 minutes to die, but the attack itself could have been just a matter of seconds. So maybe, maybe dad did snap. That certainly ru- doesn't rule out the, the dad. No. no. So they still struggle to understand what really happened. Who would come to the house, stab that girl, and leave? They just don't understand. It doesn't make any sense. Mm. Why would a random person come to the courtyard or to the house, Mm -hmm. stab Caroline in front of the house, and go? Well, it could have been somebody following her. Could have been some... But but, but why? Who? She's an 18-year-old girl. Who would want to kill her? She's not like a mafia... I don't know, no. bar owner or something. No, but if she's you're... She's an 18-year-old girl. If she's a young, attractive girl, then... Yeah, but uh, nothing happened to her. That's the thing. The no, only no... thing that happened to her is punched in the face and stabbed. Nothing else. Yeah, I don't no know. No strangulation, no sexual violence, no robbery, nothing. So I they just know. can't make any sense of it. Yeah, it's a bit wrong. She apparently was like for most people. So she didn't really have like arch enemies or nemesis oh she's 18 for goodness sake unless she has a big gang of girls that uh, she's rubbed up the wrong way in a small she... town in the yeah. south of france it's not yeah. likely um her parents were blue collar workers so they're not rich she did the shopping for her dad she cleaned the house and she did her dad's accounts I'll tell you what, if I find out it's her dad, I'm going to be absolutely gutted. She sounded like a, such a dream daughter. Yes, she worked in a local factory. Right. For money. Okay, uh-huh. Um, so she'd left school already, obviously. I think it was a obviously. bin packing factory or something like that. Oh, so cool, right, okay. Brooke will, uh, yes. uh, work as well. Nothing, as far as a gendarme could, could find, would explain her being stabbed in the street. They just can't find anything. Any explanation for that? So basically, Claude's in the frame on his own. <laughs> they just can't make. They just can't get rid of him. There's no nothing happened to her, but from being stabbed, they can't explain why it would have happened. They can't find anybody who could have done it or wanted to do it. It's just they can't get rid of the dad. The yeah. dad is the only person who was there could have done it. Why it's not clear, but who knows what their relationship really was. They just can't get rid of him. That's the only person that they have that could have done it. So as far as they're concerned, he's the murderer. They just need to prove that he did it. Yeah. She had a few boyfriends as well, so they looked at it for a while, but nothing serious at the time. None of them was really uh, known for having any hard feelings for her or anything like that. There was nothing in her life that would justify being stabbed. So basically, she's the least likely person in that area to be killed, and sadly she was. Yes. Then rumours started going around, because of course it's a small village. There's about a thousand people in, in Clérac. That's huge. What are you talking about? Yeah, I know. People? It's like 12 times our village. But yes, yeah. it, it, it's still well, it's, yeah, it's more than the nearest town as well. So yeah, it's not huge, but yeah. 1,000 people still are, enough to, are going to gossip. Yeah. So the gendarmes start hearing about those rumours. And because it's part of a murder inquiry, they have to check them all. So it takes them oh, a lot of work. Oh, what a pain in the neck. So they hear, for example, that Caroline is an easy girl. Some say she was prostituting herself. That she had bad boyfriends, up to no good. 
But we already know that's not true. That she was on drugs all the time. That but but has... just not that night that she was yes. murdered. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh-huh. That she has a weird relationship with her dad. Some say it's incestuous. That kind of rumours. And yes, she had a very, very close relationship with the dad. And the gendarmes look into it. Um, he was born in 1939. Uh, he lost his mom at nine years old and was raised by, this, by his sisters. And a few years later, all his sisters and brothers started to die. So he's the last one of the family and he's not old. Right. So he has been a bit unlucky in terms of siblings. So after a divorce, the daughter decided to stay with her dad to take care of her dad. So they have a very close relationship, but it's still a father-daughter relationship. There's an abs- the, the gendarmes looked at it very closely. They couldn't find anything that would be like untowards in their relationship. She's just very close to him. She does lots of things for him. She's kind of his mom yeah. more than his wife. She's, she's a primary caregiver. Exactly. She takes care of him because he can't do it. He can't even do his accounts. And he's an adult. Yeah. So he's clearly not very clever and she probably knows it and she just looks after him. She does his shopping. She does the cleaning. She does everything around the house for him. That's it. Oh, poor Caroline. I want to give her a hug. She sounds like such a lovely person. Oh, no. So they just none of those rumors are true. But of course, the gendarmes had to spend a lot of hours looking in all of them yes. and check them all. I, I don't think people kind of like uh, take that into account when they just start, you know, but people like to gossip. They like well, to they do like to gossip. They tell bad things about people. But that's I mean, what people, it, they do. nine times out of ten, there's not a whisper no, of, not. of truth behind it. No, but that's what people like to do. They like to believe bad things about other people. So after a while, the gendarmes start having a good idea of what really happened during the night. So first, Valerie, who is one of Caroline's friends, was supposed to pick her up to go to a party. She came to her dad's house, but Caroline wasn't there. And her dad didn't know where she was. Right. He suggested that she probably was with her mum. Right. Because that's where she went, like, every day. Yeah. And we, we already know that she was. Yes. At, she had visited yeah. her Oh, mom. she often had dinner with her mum as well. Right. So it, it, it would be very likely that she was just yes. having dinner with her mum on that day. So that's what he said. Maybe check her mum. So, because it's... So nothing overly suspicious. No, nothing suspicious there. What's kind of weird is that she forgot about the party. But... Okay. I Maybe she happened. goes to so many parties, she just forgot about uh, that one. Don't know. Maybe she was distracted. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. Maybe she had a long discussion with her mom and completely forgot the time. Who knows? Or changed her mind and just didn't or want decided to go not to the go. party. Yeah. yeah, that's also possible. I mean, look at us. We're hermits. I can't think of anything more tiresome than having to go to a party. Ugh. Yes. And he said if she's, she's not with her mom, she might be with her boyfriend, mm-hmm. who's called Adbert. Who's called Adbert in 1991? But anyway. Albert? Yes. Well, that's an old man's name. name that is. Yeah, I know. I know. But anyway, <laughs> her boyfriend at the time was called Albert. And the gendarmes find out that, yes, at 8 p.m., Caroline was having dinner with Albert. Right, okay. So they were sitting down in front of the news. Uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> that's what people would have done at the time, no internet. So, yes, they, they had dinner together. Mm-hmm. Then he drove her to her mum's on his moped. Of course. At the time, all the kids, of course. Eight, 16 and over, had a moped. A Peugeot 103, most likely. Oh, God. Or 102. They're, they just sound like, it makes such a noise for Oh, they just... smoke blue and oh, they're terrible. Oh, but anyway, God. Th- that's what all the kids had. Yeah. So he drives her to her mum. And at that point, we're talking half eight, quarter to nine. Caroline's mum confirms that timing. That yes, her daughter arrived at about that time. And she also says that Caroline left about 10 past 10 to go home to her dad's. Right. It's a 10-minute walk also. So we're talking, what, maximum two kilometers? And, and it was 11 o'clock when the whimpering was, was yes. heard. Yeah. Um, also, it's 1991, so nobody thinks about the dangers of all these uh, pedophiles oh, yes, uh, uh, paving the streets. So yeah. an 18-year-old can walk in the streets in 1991 with no problem and would have no problem. So, oh, sorry, should I? And also, she's an and, adult. I mean, she's 18 yeah, she's years 18, old. Yeah, she works yeah, yeah. full time. You know, you don't Yeah, but think... now 18 year olds would probably not do that, <laughs> I suspect. Their parents wouldn't let them. No, well, maybe. Their parents not. did it in the 80s but they, yeah. or 90s, but they wouldn't allow their kids to work at 10 p.m. at night. Yeah. Of I course, mean, Ka- Ka- Caroline must be the same age as you. She must have been born the same age as you. Uh, uh, year she you. was 18 in 91. No, I was 18 in 92. So she's, yeah. So a year younger than you. Uh, she's a year younger yeah. than me, yeah. So about the same age. Mm-hmm. Of course, it's July 
in the south of France, and 10 p.m. the sun is setting. Essentially. Oh, the sun so is it's not setting. Even night. The cicadas are giving it loudly. Yeah, it's yeah exactly. So sultry. It, it, it's nothing like, the, like night at that point. It's no. daylight. Yes. So she should have arrived at her dad's at 10, uh, 20 past 10 mm -hmm. or so. Again, the gendarmes go back to those keys. They just want to know what those keys are and why they were mm -hmm. where they were. So they asked Valerie about them, the friend who was supposed to pick her up. And she remembers that when she came to pick Caroline up, there were keys on the door. But it wasn't Caroline's keys. And she's pretty, much sure, she's pretty sure of that. So that would mean, again... The, the keys had swapped places. That up to that point, the keys on the door are Claude's keys. And somehow they've been swapped to Caroline later. Mm -hmm. And it makes still no sense. They just can't understand what those keys are. What, what happened to those keys? And Claude still doesn't have a good explanation for it. And so, Claude changes the story, which is never Yeah, so they arrest him again. Right. Again, they have two days for to question him yeah. without a lawyer. They play it old, old school. When they question him, they get him out of his cell. They draw a chalk circle on the floor, put him in the circle, and say, you can't leave the circle. That seems a bit barbaric. And then they question him for hours. That is barbaric. Yeah, and then when he starts getting thirsty, because remember, it's July in the south of France, so uh, it would have been super hot. Sweaty. One of the gendarmes go and gets a glass and uh -huh. puts it on the table just out of reach. If he doesn't leave the circle, he can't reach the, for the glass. He would admit to being Genghis Khan at that point. And th now those are not good uh, techniques for questioning people. Yeah, but that's the early 90s. We're still on 80s. Uh, ways of working from cops and we know what it was like in the UK and in the Gene US Hunt, with the liquid yeah. lunches and all that crap mm. so mm -hmm. and the corruption in New York in the police and oh, yeah. all that so it wasn't a good period to be arrested no so they don't have much for evidence or at least nothing that proves he did it so they want a confession but it just doesn't work it just doesn't confess to it it just says I didn't do it Right. They tried everything they could, and he just won't admit it. It doesn't crack. He sticks to his story the whole time. And even then, even though he doesn't confess, even though they have very little proof of anything, they have proof that she was killed. Yes. That's about it. She, he's still formally charged by a judge for her murder. So he goes to jail. I, uh, I mean, for, for me, it kind of like feels that well, we're going to have to put someone in prison for this murder, so... We'll the only person we have that kind of makes sense is him. So, yeah. yeah. That, that's what they essentially go for. Yeah. So, on the 16th of August, the judge orders a new search of the house. Mm -hmm. They take him out of his cell, and they take him to his house. On the way there, they are surprised by his happy mood. She chats to them, he even tells jokes. Clearly, he doesn't understand what's going on. At that point, somebody... One of the gendarmes should have said, okay, that guy is not right in the head. We need to have him tested by a psychologist. You don't chat and tell jokes to the gendarmes who take you to your house to search it because your daughter was killed. Yeah. And they suspect you're a murderer. That makes no sense. The only reason why you do that is because you don't understand what's going on around you. I think you said some kind of break. Not necessarily. It's just not clever enough to understand what's going on. You think he's far as gump? It could be. I guess so. To me, that's what it looks like. If I was one of the gendarmes, I would have said, okay, we, we can't take that guy to the house and question him. He's clearly not right. So anyway, they do it anyway. They take him to the, ho to the house. And they discover new traces of blood. Because they spend more time there. There's one on the sink. There's another in Caroline's bedroom. And they find clothes with blood stains that have obviously been washed. It still doesn't good for the, look good for the dad. No. Claude, what happened? Yeah, What's if she on? had been killed by a stranger, why would he have come back with the clothes washed <laughs> and put them back in the bedroom? That makes no sense. Yeah. Again, the only person is the dad. There's nobody else they can find that would fit anything. It has to be the dad. So the commission, the judge commissions Rilo Ribot. Apparently, he's a famous crime scene investigator at the time. Never heard of him. But right. I guess if I was a cop at the time, I would have heard. He delivers his findings on the 18th of August, two days later. So he's a Henry Lee of France yeah, in the 90s. he is, yeah. yes. So he, not, he notes the, the following. Claude says that he found his daughter hanging from the gate, that he untied her and rolled her over. If that's the case, what did the body have cross legs when the gendarmes saw it? 
So it doesn't, you can't explain the way her legs were when they found, when the, the gendarmes arrived. Yeah, no, because she was still alive, so she wasn't in rigor or anything. No, and where would she have her legs crossed? Yeah. They're just, well, you, so you I'm can't saying explain. if she was in rigor, then you wouldn't be able to, yeah. to move. Yeah, but at but that point she was alive. just dead, so she yeah. wouldn't have been. So he can't explain that. The blood splatter spatter on clothes clothes don't match what he says he did to the body. Also, there's blood all over all over Claude's bottom half clothes, but not a drop on the top half. Again, he can't explain how that's possible. And there are no prints in the blood on the shutter outside. If Claude had made that mark on the shutter with his fingers after having touched his daughter, sides. there would have been fingerprints. Yeah. There's no fingerprint in that blood. Right. He can't explain that either. It's like somebody used gloves. This is getting just more and more bizarre and looking less and less good for, for Claude. Yes. So the whole time when Claude talked to his lawyer, he doesn't understand why the gendarmes are suspecting him. He says that they're clever and they'll eventually realize that it's not him, so he's not worried. Oh, Claude. He's so naive. Oh, Claude. Clearly he doesn't understand what's happening. This whole case is very heartbreaking. Yeah. So on the 16th of September, a month later, the gendarmes are going to organize a reenactment at the house. It lasts about seven hours. And when eventually asked to show how he held his daughter on a mannequin, Claude refuses. He said it's too much to him. It's too much for him to, to do that. He, right. he refuses to do that. The judges, lawyers, and gendarmes all stare at him because they don't understand why. But that li- brings a little bit of doubt in the investigated judge's mind. He really looks genuinely distraught by what they're asking to do. Yeah, can you reenact the last seconds of life with your yes, your daughter? Yeah. Yes, if he was a psychopath, he would have done that. Mm. He wouldn't have seen why it was a problem. But he just doesn't want to do it. It's just too much for him. So the judge kind of starts feeling maybe he is innocent and it's unfortunate that everything points to him, but maybe it's not him. That's pretty much the only, the first moment in the case where anybody starts a, thinking that maybe something else happened that we don't know, well, but it I'm, wasn't him. I'm holding on to that glimmer almost as tightly as Claude probably was. Yeah. So on the 27th of September, against the wish of the prosecutor, the investigating judge frees Claude. He's not innocent at that point. He's still the only suspect. He's still arrested for murder, but he's free to go home. Well, he doesn't sound like he's going to the mastermind to disappear in the no. wind. No. He's a blue-collar factory worker who's, yes. you know... Yes, and also the judge is now starting to think that they need to review things and it probably isn't him. So he has no it, reason to keep it, him in jail. Do you know, it's almost like the police are only concentrating on the one person and they're only looking at the information. Yes, well, from that point on, the only thing the authorities try to do is answer one question. Who it's, killed her? No, it's why would he have killed his daughter? Right. That's the only thing they try to do. That still they're feels sure wrong. They're sure he did. That still feels wrong to yeah, me. Yeah, they're sure he did. They just don't know why. And they're trying to prove why <sighs> he would have done it. They know about their close relationship. And yes, she was half uh, his mom and half his yes. daughter. Uh, there's no problem with that. She hated when a woman came too close to him. Of course, she was protecting him. So she was territorial, right? But no, 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 she wasn't. I don't think she was territorial. I think she was protecting him because she knew he wasn't clever. So she didn't want anybody to abuse him. Mm. So she didn't like when people got too close to him. I think that, that's the way I see it. I don't think she was territorial. She's, it's not like, oh, it's my dad. You're not being his girlfriend. Mm. I think it's like, no, you, you can't get close to him because I have to protect him. I think it's more like, like that. Mm. That's how I see it. But they don't hear anything bad anyway. They can't justify him killing her because of their relationship. They just, there's just nothing wrong in that relationship. By the autumn of 1991, the inquiry totally stalls. Years pass after that without any new element. Claude is still under arrest, free but under arrest. So it's sort of Damocles time. He's oh yeah, he can't probably he probably, he can't probably can't leave the country. Yes. He probably can't have a job because he's technically mm. in jail. It's just yes. outside in his house, but he's still arrested for murder. So he's like paroled. No, he's not paroled. Not because paroled, he's bailed. It's like he's out on bail. He's kind of out on bail, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, for years. Yes. 
after about four years, the judge decides that uh, they have to decide to they have to decide something. Yes. So either they declare him innocent, or they send him to trial. After thinking a while, the judge decides to start the inquiry again from scratch. Right. Instead, so a new gendarmerie team is appointed to review the case. And very quickly, they point to something that has been missed from the original inquiry. 600 meters from the house, there's a medical educative center for mentally challenged people. Right. Nobody looked into that. When Caroline walked from her mom to her dad's, she walked past every day. that center every day. Yeah. Why didn't they look into it in the first place? Because they were too busy it trying seems... to finger the father, that's why. Yeah. But it seems very significant that there's that group of people who are known for having mental issues. Yes. Essentially next door. Yes. Why didn't, even, didn't they even look at it? So they go and they ask for the register from 1991. So that's four years later at that point. To know who was living at the time in the house. And they're given five names. And was there anyone who's got a violent background? Well, they run through their database and none of them has any dealing with the police before. Right. At that point. So they're not known, okay. So they're not known for violence. They haven't been arrested. Right. So they dropped the idea. It obviously wasn't that. Right. So that's it. That's the end of that inquiry. And once again, they're back to having only one suspect, Claude, (sighs) the dad. Step on up, Claude. So at that point, he's getting tired of all that. Yeah. I mean, this has taken years off your life at this oh, yeah. point. Clearly. So at that point, he's trying to fight for, to clear his name. He wants to be declared innocent. So it takes him two more years and a letter to the president of the republic to finally be cleared of all charges. Is that the Chirac judge, at that point? At that point, had no choice. Is so that I, Chirac at that point? It's 96, so yes, it would be. So at that point, the judge had no choice. Mm-hmm. Had, they had to do something. They can't just have somebody arrested for murder but not tried for six years. No, that's, that's ridiculous. ridiculous. That is just, it seems barbarically cruel. Yes, and especially since the reason why he wasn't tried is because they had no evidence. <laughs> so, so they essentially like arrested a guy like for no innocent. reason. There's, there's, a, there's niggles, but there's no... Well, they can't make the story work, No, but that doesn't prove you did it. No. If you took a random person in the street, you might not be able to make their stories work yeah. either. It doesn't yeah. mean that they did it. So... They had absolutely nothing, so they, they have to declare him innocent at that point. Of course, the village doesn't see it that way. No. Because as far as they're concerned, he oh, killed he's his a daughter. guilty. Oh, he's totally guilty. He's a guilty uh, yeah. son of a bitch, you know, yeah, I so can imagine. He loses all his friends, he loses his job, nobody talks to him. Eventually, he has to leave the town. Poor and Claude. And he starts his life somewhere else. Poor, poor Claude. If he turns out to be the murderer and you've made me feel sorry for him all this time, I will not be happy. Nothing happens until 2011. 2011? Yes. Whoa. We're talking 10 years later. Yeah. I don't remember this. I should really remember this because we were here at that point. Yeah, we probably heard about it in the news but didn't connect the dots. Yeah. A cleaning lady at the medical educative centre. Oh, we're back to the centre. We're was... back in the centre. Okay. Finds a piece of paper under a mattress. Right. She unfolds it and she reads it and it says, I'm Caroline Nolibe's murderer. No. That Feigned w- shock there. <laughs> yeah, that raises a few questions about the standard of cleaning of the centre because it took 10 years to move a mattress. <laughs> yeah, do, come on people, we're supposed to be uh, flipping your mattresses twice a year. Come yeah. on, chop chop. But anyway, she gives the piece of paper to the director of the centre right. who forwards it to the gendarmerie straight away. The room where the piece of paper was found was used by a 38-year-old man called Philip Gwendouz, or Gendouz, uh-huh. or Gondouz. It depends where the name comes from. It kind of sounds like a North African name. I can't tell where it comes from. But anyway, it could be Gendouz. We'll call him that. According to people working at a center, he's a nice guy. He's always polite. His name doesn't appear on the register that was given to the gendarme in '95. Why not? Apparently, it was forgotten. The problem is that Philippe Gendouz has a na- mental age of seven at 38. Oh, no. So he's, he's even more vulnerable than Claude. He, yeah, he's been living at the centre for the last 20 years. And he works at the centre and makes no, no waves. So nobody, he was forgotten, but nobody really thought about him at any point because he's just a nice guy in the background, essentially. Yeah, or well, do you know who it could be, dot, dot, dot? He was never in that frame. However, when the gendarmes go through records, 
they discover that he has a past. In 1985, six years before the murder, he attacked a young 17-year-old girl with a knife. He tried to rape her, but she fought back and escaped. He was arrested, but because of his mental age, he was declared not responsible for his actions, so he was let go. That's very, well, I guess uh, he was wanting to, to have sex is very much a physiological uh, yeah. imperative. So rather than he was sent to a mental hospital for a little while, and then when he came out, he went to the centre. Right. And that was it. Why wasn't he looked at at the time? And it's a question of dates. The reason why it was forgotten is because the murder took place on the 31st of July. Uh-huh. The centre closes for the holidays on the 1st of August. Because of the holidays, everybody forgot about him. They were all ready to go, eager to leave for their month's holidays in, in August, and they completely forgot that he was there. Oh, my God. <laughs> Crying out loud. And what's best is that the gendarmes themselves also forgot about him. Everybody forgot about him until that piece of paper. So on the 30th of May 2001, Ten years later, the gendarme get a search warrant for his room. Mm. And when he sees them, arrive, sees them arrive, he gets up and shouts, I don't kill anyone. <laughs> As you do. Yeah, no, that doesn't seem suspicious at all. Yeah, the first thing you say to Rosa is entering your room. <laughs> In his room, they find a sort of diary that the gendarme start reading on, on site. Uh-huh. He was known for keeping some diary-ish thing because that was his way of thinking. So right. he was externalizing his thought. Yes. And on pages from 1992, they read, the nobility's girl was killed. And then the list of girl, girls that I have to kill. And the list of girls that I have to attack. So a whole list of girls on the pages. They also find three knives and a glove cut at the wrist. So they arrest him and question him, obviously. Because now I kind of explain why the, there's no um, why there's no fingerprint yeah, in the, because in the blood he's got this glove because he was on. wearing that glove. He doesn't make it hard for them. He explains what he did, <laughs> which knife he used, and that he used the glove to hit his print. So he's seven age mental age, but still, he still knows honest. to hide his prints. Yeah. He also explains that he saw Caroline walk past his bedroom every day, and he found her beautiful. Beautiful, so he followed her. And he caught up with her, stabbed her in the neck, and then in the chest. And but he didn't stab her in the neck. Well, he said, that's what he says he did. He's if he stabbed her in the neck, he would not have been able to go back to... Yeah, uh, yeah, I guess so. That arterial yeah. spark goes everywhere. At that point, remember, it's ten years later, so his recollection is probably not perfect. Okay. So he's arrested and sent to jail, obviously. And a few weeks later, the uh, reenactment is organized, and Philip plays the game. He shows exactly what he did. But three months later, he retracts his confession. And at that point, the judge says, no, <laughs> that doesn't matter, trial. So he goes to trial. Mm-hmm. And there, of course, the question is, is he responsible for what he did? Remember, is he mentally responsible yeah, because, as opposed to being physically yes, responsible? Because remember, does, he, was, d- does he go to hospital or does he go to jail? Yes, because yes. he was already found in the past not yes. responsible for his actions. So why would he be responsible this time? Yes. Three psychiatrists are charged with an, an evaluation. Yeah. The first one says that he can indeed be held responsible for his action in the murder trial. Mm-hmm. The second one says exactly the opposite. And the third one says that, like the first one, he can be judged in the trial, taking into account his understanding of the proceedings. So the majority verdict is he can be tried, but they have to be careful that he understands what's going on. That's going to be... So they have to go slowly and... And And probably explain things five times and make sure he understands what's going on. Make the legal process easy for a a guy who's got the mental age of a seven-year-old to understand. So that's going to be hard work. Yeah. So the trial starts on the 10th of January 2004. He's on the bench, looking a bit disconnected. 2004? You mean 2014, surely? No, 2004. Remember, he was arrested in 2001. Oh, I thought you said he was, it was 2011 he was Oh, arrested. no, I must have typed the right date wrong. It's 2001. Oh, okay, Sorry. right, okay. Well, that's why we don't know about it then in that Yes, case. no, uh, yeah, I said nothing happened until 2011, 10 years later. So it was 2001, 10 right. years later. Right, okay. 
Yeah, he he's sitting on the bench and he looks disconnected. He smiles, doesn't seem worried. As far as he's concerned, he's innocent. So he denies having killed her and he's just waiting for things to finish and he can go home. Mm -hmm. His victim from 1985 testifies against him. She explains how she thought she was going to die on that day yeah. when he attacked her with a knife. Poor woman. Then something extremely rare happened. Um, after 10 years of being a suspect and being questioned and pointed at and blah, blah, the general prosecutor, I guess it's a Neji in the US, turns to Claude and apologizes. Wow. That never happens. Wow. That's, that's not something that happens in trials. That's big. You can't but, give Claude back his time, but at least no. you've given him vindication yes. in a court he of law. He says that on behalf of the French justice system, he presents his excuse, excuses to him. Ugh. I'll tell you what, I hope Claude, I hope somebody's there looking after Claude and making sure he gets some kind of financial well, settlement. Then he goes back to Philippe, the murderer. Yes. Sorry, back to the case. And he lists the, ch the charges uh -huh. and the sentence he requests. He starts reminding the court that the charges would normally lead automatically to life in prison. Uh -huh. But given his, his background, yeah. he requests 12 to 15 years in prison. No. And he's sentenced to 15 years. No, he should never be out. And he doesn't appeal. But he should never be out on the streets. I know, I know. So for the years he was suspected of killing his daughter without proof and everything he went through, Claude is awarded 50,000 euros. Oh no, he should be awarded 50,000 euros for every year and he had to live under that shadow. Better than that, it's paid late, months after he was supposed to receive it, um, and he probably had to pay tax. After he, after he had to hunt his payments through the system because just nobody wanted to pay. The state yeah. just didn't want to pay. Uh, and Andy Liv had to have paid huge amount of tax on it, no doubt. Probably, yes. And best of all, when the state was made to pay, they refused to pay 800 euros of interest. And that's the end of the story. I'm so annoyed. I'm so annoyed. I'm really, really annoyed. Poor Claude. Do you know what? Sometimes a daddy's girl... Is just a daddy's girl and accept it. 